Hi, everybody. My name is Erin. Um, today I'm going to tell you a quick story about this kid here, Elliot Finn. But before I do, I just want to quickly um, remind you what um, Andrew just said. IOB stands for the opposite of NIMBY. It's for people who say, yes, this is the positive change that I want to see in my own neighborhood. Um, it's for citizen-led, neighbor-funded change. Uh, we call IOB a crowd resourcing platform, blending two concepts. Uh, crowdfunding, the pooling of lots of small online donations to a single cause or organization and resource organizing, a concept of instilling the financial sustainability of your work with the community that you serve. So crowd resourcing um, refers to uh, organizing all the types of capital, financial, um, social capital, in-kind donations, volunteer time, um, into serving the community that you're working in. Um, IOB works nationally. We started as a New York City pilot, so I'm going to share some work from New York City with you today. Um, and we work towards stronger, more sustainable neighborhoods. Um, and I think that has a role in resilience, and I want to ask you some questions about that today. So back to Elliot. Um, so Elliot Finn is sitting in a park called Traverse Park in Jackson Heights, Queens. Um, and Jackson Heights is a very special neighborhood in Queens, for those of you who don't know about it. It's very diverse. Um, people there come from 71, na um, 71 different countries. It's about 60% uh, Hispanic, 25% uh, Asian, um, and it's also very dense. Um, in fact, when you think about New York City, on average, there's about 280 people per acre of open space. But in Jackson Heights, there's 14,000. Um, so, this uh, group of parents, the um, gentleman with the bald head um, is Elliot's dad, uh, Donovan, and he and a bunch of parents started the Jackson Heights Green Alliance to try and make more open space in Jackson Heights. So Elliot's sitting in this concrete park, and the park is right here. Um, so the Jackson Heights Green Alliance wanted to open up the street adjacent to the park for spillover on Sundays using a Department of Transportation play street permit on Sundays um, from in the spring to the fall. Um, so they wanted to use this section, and they started doing this in, on Sundays in 2007. They did it for a few years, and then in 2011, they put a project on IOB to raise $3,400 to actually open up that play street for the entire summer, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they did it for the whole summer, and uh, they closed the street to car traffic, and they rolled out some astroturf and put up a bouncy house, and then all of a sudden you have a bigger park. Um, and then they did it again in 2012 with another few grand um, and some more friends and more uh, fun. Um, and it was really successful. Um, and then the Department of Transportation decided to permanently close the street to car traffic and open it up as a play street permanently. Um, and then across the street there um, is a school and they were uh, facing a deficit and decided to uh, sell off part of the athletic grounds behind the school um, to a developer. Um, but the people in the neighborhood actually decided that that could maybe also be an extension of the park. So a bunch of people got together and they decided that they would raise enough money and then purchase that area from this um, school as well, um, thus extending the park even more. And now, today, uh, the same group is also working with the adjacent car lot uh, to see if that could also become part of the um, park extension. So over the course of about six years, with the help of a few hundred neighbors um, and less than $10,000, um, and then a few million dollars after that, uh, the group uh, has effectively doubled the amount of open space in Jackson Heights, um, which I think is pretty cool, um, because this is a great case of tactical urbanism, right? So tactical urbanism is a new concept where you can take uh, short term or small scale um, demonstration project to transform the ideas of public space for the entire community. Um, so you do this temporary change and then people can reimagine their public spaces. Um, so this is pretty cool, right? Um, this is kind of awesome. Neighbors did this for their own community. Um, so my story actually usually ends here, um, but today we thought we would do something a little bit different. Um, so these are the people who donated to the project. Um, this is where they live. It's about a mile and a half radius around the area. And we think this is really important because we feel like having people locally donating to this project means that there's community buy-in for the project. We also feel like it means that that means that there's going to be long-term stewardship within the actual community to take care of the space. Right? But what else does it mean? Um, so I think that we often talk about um, disruption and digital tools as like what types of tools come out of big disturbances, like Ushahidi, like mobile giving. Um, but what if we use digital tools to um, plan for resilience? And I think that's why we're all here, right? 
Uh, so we decided we were going to poll. We we're going to just do a controlled survey of three of our projects. So we polled all the people who donated and volunteered to this project, the 78th Street Play Street, uh, the people who donated and volunteered at the 137th um, Beautification Project in northern Manhattan, and to a small green patch, which is on Bergen Street, about five blocks from here. Um, and we polled them and asked them a few questions um, that I'd like to share with you today. Uh, so the first is, we wanted to know if people were involved before they, got in, uh, before they took their first action on IOB, whether that was to sign up to volunteer or to donate. Most people were a little bit involved. And then we asked them, uh, after they took that first action, what changed? Did their involvement change? 40% um, of people said that their involvement actually increased after that first step. So that means that people's first donation or their first volunteering was actually a gateway drug to deeper civic involvement. Um, so people donated in lots or uh, participated in lots of different ways, right? So opportunities for engagement can include donating, volunteering, coming to an actual event, advocating for the project in public, um, lots of different things. And then we asked people how they felt about their community after participating. Um, so 95% of people felt like they had positively changed the way that they felt about their community. 21% um, of them actually felt like they were an important part of their community, which I think is the most important slice of this pie here. Uh, and then we asked people how they felt about their neighbors. 100% of people felt like they knew their neighbors better in some way. More connected, they said hello more often, they look people in the eye when they pass them in the street, they recognize people, they know their names. Um, and this is all sounding like really hunky-dory, and in fact, we were actually a little startled, and we're feeling like maybe uh, the survey results were coming back and there was like some sort of error or something. Uh, but just so you th know that this is actual New Yorkers telling us this information, uh, there's this, I feel more connected to the other volunteers. On the other hand, participation has made me even more irritated by the other people in the neighborhood, the ones who throw trash, puke, urinate in the garden that I take care of. So you can tell that this is real evidence coming from real New Yorkers here. Um, so then we also ask people if participating in the project in their neighborhood affected positively the way that they responded to Hurricane Sandy. And so just 17% of people said that it did positively affect the way that they responded in some way. A few people wrote in answers and said that it made them feel more grateful. A few people wrote in and said it didn't affect them very much, but getting more connected helped them um, deliver some in-kind donations to other people. Um, but for the most part, there was no significant change. But there was that 17% of people who did feel like they um, changed the way that they thought about it. So um, this morning, uh, we posted a blog post about some things that we would like to measure. Um, we have this opportunity with all these active citizens that we're working with on IOB um, who are doing all sorts of things at the neighborhood scale. Um, so uh, we put them up on our blog, and um, you know, I think that we have an opportunity to measure something significant here. I think we're going to try and figure that out today and tomorrow. Um, and so I invite you to come tell me what you think that we should be measuring, um, and I'd love to talk to you, with you about it. Thanks. All right.